we get to the mark. Because by the time we get to the mark, all I want to do is turn down and launch. Um, so, so if possible, I get on that starboard lay line um, and, and hopefully like even outside that three boat length zone. Uh, I hate, hate, hate coming in on a port tack into that three boat length zone. I will, I will do it. <laughs> Unlike us. <laughs> um, uh, if there's a, if there's a tactical advantage or if there was a, um, a, a lift that made sense for me to, to go that direction. So um, once I know I have it, and in fact, maybe put a little bit in the bank, um, I will call for the pull. And I will just, I think I usually just say, go pull, yep. go on pull. Um, what you'll see Heather does is she, she, she is, Cleated the, she's pleated the jib, um, and she just holds her hand back, and I and I'll I'll touch her hand and grab the line just so that she's felt that, and I say I've got it, right? And so now she's gonna start setting the the pole. Go ahead and walk yeah. through that. I was for me. I also if for this set, I will take the twing off now. She goes on that. I've I've released this the guy line. Can we ask questions now or no? Yep, yep. So you put the topping lift on before you like before you even go out there. It's always oh, on. It's always on. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And that's the that's the beauty of having it on the mast, right? Is so you can just have it on. Leave it. And, then, I, and, yeah. and I'll tell you, even in the old uh, uh, the old setup with with it on the boom, um, we always left the topping lift attached. Yep. Um, and so that it was was always there. You might have to loosen it a bit, right? But that's the nice thing here is that um, generally, if it's lighter air, right? And we've if we've um, lowered the topping lift because you're in light air, now it's set for probably the conditions that you're already seeing, right? Or if it was you know if it was at that length, you're, it's already there. So, any other questions on the set coming up, Mark? Okay. okay. So. And then she pushes the pole all the way forward is the last thing she does. And then I will lock in that guy as much as, as much as I can right there. She'll come back, sits down. She's now taking that. Now, I will tell you, go ahead and stand back as if you do. So I am now, I am now have both of these in one hand and then the tiller. And I've just through practice, I always keep the jib between my uh, thumb and forefinger, and the main is between my forefinger and my middle finger, right? So I now know if I'm, if I need to ease the main out, I can uncleat that and let that run between those two fingers. If I need to hold everything, I just, I just clamp on it. Um, if I need to release the jib, you know, I'm, I'm pulling that one. And oftentimes what I will do, if it's gusty or breezy or whatever, or if I know I now need to, to start to bear off, I just pull them both up out of the cleat and now I can control either one that I, I want to do. So. Can I add one thing? Yeah. So also, if it is windy, I think in the demonstration you had said like puff on or something and I moved my weight over, like just because I'm getting the pull doesn't mean my boat balance responsibility has ended. So that's also the communication too. And if I see a gust or something, I'll let him. No, but kind of keeping my weight slow, slow kind of movements back and forth. Thank you. I was going to ask, that. how do you keep okay. it upright? Because you're, you know, you're on, yeah. you're on deck. Yeah. Even for takedown, yeah. sometimes yeah. I'll be, uh, you know, as weight far, for, far over as possible to, to take it down so that I'm not, you know, healing to the other side. And the other thing is, if it's lighter air, right, knowing that she needs to go up there, I might now, if we were both down here, I might now even take a, a knee in. You know, so that I'm, so that we keep that boat as balanced as possible, as flat as possible. Okay, okay. so you've set. Pull set. I've already taken the twing off when I went to set the pole. Got you. Okay. We're here. I keep dragging the, the tiller. All right, <laughs> and uh, we're here, bearing away big ease. And what I've done because I, I have sailed with. Um, with a lot of folks, and you'll see what I do is I just pick this up in the air and then sort of drop it, that helps it run. And then so standing up and in one motion, I'm grabbing the halyard um, and, and getting ready to do that. But but the reason for yelling big E's is I'm often teaching new new crew, and I think it just helps for them to know, like trim and ease, right? And say, say big E's helps them to go, oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm easing out now. Um, 
But the other, you know, the, the optimal thing to do is, of course, just to watch the telltales, right, and keep those telltales flying, you know, during um, during that down, uh, during that turn down. Keep in mind, of course, you know, the first thing to do, ease that main out. You can't turn the boat down. Uh, you put all the rudder, you know, all pull off the rudder you want. You're not going to turn down unless you ease the main out. Um, and it's you know more efficient if it's uh, if the main and the rudder aren't fighting each other. Um, a little bit more on uh, on the uh, oh you can over trim the jib a bit if you wanted to to help pull the to pull the bow down. Um, can I ask another question? Yeah yeah go sorry. Uh, sorry as crew Heather what were you holding on to with the uh, left hand? So when he said big ease because uh -huh. we're about to go downwind, I am letting off. Some of the outhaul, depending on how the weather conditions are, some of the bang. We don't usually have Cunningham on, but if we do, Cunningham up. Okay. But that way, so with the bang, right, so he can turn down. But that way, I am ready to do the controls at the same time that I'm easing the sail uh, as we're rounding mark. So that it's not, sometimes it, there's not time, right? But that, that is my goal to try and do it all uh, at the same time. Looking at the telltales and just touching the box. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions here? No. Okay. So yeah, way back. Why is it important to push the pole forward? So uh, it helps. So the question is, why is it important to pull it, push the pole forward? It helps to um, to fill the sail as as you'll be turning down wind. The wind is still going to be forward a bit. It's not going to be directly behind. Um, so uh, it, it will um, once it's once the spinnaker pops out, um, I can then grab the guy and, and pull it and try to, you essentially, you're sort of pulling the spinnaker through the breeze a little bit to try to get it to pop. Um, what'll often happen though is as the spinnaker comes out, it's releasing more of that line and that pole will come back naturally. And so um, what what the crew can do in, in that situation is just gonna get used to popping up and just just pushing it forward again. But, but it's the, um, it, it, it's, it's to get the spinnaker drawing as quickly as possible because you're going to be probably a little bit higher before you turn all the way down. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. 